Hang on. What's... What's... I know this camera. Hello. I'm not distracted by the tiny little dog called Olive, I promise. Some of you may already recognize this camera, but more importantly, some of you might not know who Emily is. Emily is the creator and host of the Micro Four Nerds YouTube channel. At the time of making this video, she's currently got 56,000 subscribers and also is running a photo contest, which you can take part in by following the link in the description below. And yes, this beautiful blue Lumix camera belongs to Emily and she kindly let me use it to make this video. And after using it for a full day, I desperately want another Micro Four Thirds camera. What was your first Micro Four Thirds camera? And when was your first Micro Four Thirds camera? So I've been a Micro Four Nerd since uh, 2017. And my first camera was the Pen F, the Olympus Pen F, which is beautiful. And it was and still is really, really expensive. But the, the camera that really sold me on the system was the second camera that I bought for just 200 pounds, which was the Lumix G7. And between those two, I realized that there's a huge range of like both really premium, gorgeous Micro Four Thirds cameras and more uh, entry level fun cameras and tiny cameras. Emily just said two very important words, tiny cameras. And yes, I have a very special tiny camera for you in this video. And that is this blue Lumix GM1, kindly lent to me by Emily. This little GM1 is paired up with a 14mm f2.5 pancake lens. And you know I love me a pancake. Oh, what's on the menu today? Pancake lenses, every day. This little 14 mm lens on a 4 3rd sensor gives us a 28 mm full frame field of view, which yeah, for me is one of my well, personal yeah. favorites when I'm shooting street photography, although I've not had much luck with it on Micro Four Thirds cameras in the past, but we'll get into that. Much like other Micro Four Thirds cameras from 2013, the GM1 is surprisingly well equipped. And within that, we have a touch screen. And such screens on E-mount cameras didn't come till a few years later, so having one on a, such a small camera as this just shows how ahead of the game Lumix and Olympus both were with Micro Four Thirds cameras. This touchscreen does come in really handy, but one problem I had was I kept on setting an autofocus area that I didn't mean to when I was just holding the camera with one hand, so I'd have to remember to then cancel that if I wanted to go back to a wide selection area, which I often was. That's a quick photo. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Gorgeous. Love it, thank you. <laughs> and then when it comes to like your style of photography and what you like to shoot mainly, is Micro Four Thirds kind of at the core of that? Do you think Micro Four Thirds is ideal for what you shoot? So I'm a little bit of I just love and I'm really passionate about photography as a whole. Like sometimes I'll get really into astrophotography or I'll do X, Y, and Z. And I think the thing I love about photography is there's always something else to learn. So I don't really have a specific genre, but what I'm probably known best for is travel, lifestyle, and street photography. And Micro Four Thirds just plays into that so well because I don't often need such a shallow depth of field. I like something that's incognito and doesn't get in the way. And I just think it works brilliantly having something that I can always have with me. Now this point on using a camera that you can always have with you is crucial. You know me, I try big cameras, I try small cameras, I try old cameras, I try new cameras. And often the cameras that are the most exciting to use are those that are so small you can carry them with you without a second thought. Whether it's a Micro Four Thirds camera, a compact camera, or even a smaller Sony E-mount camera. This GM1, however, is the smallest interchangeable lens camera I've personally used. And it's hard to believe that this camera is this much smaller because I traveled with the Lumix G X1 only a year ago and thought at the time this was the smallest interchangeable lens camera I could probably ever use. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, around here is one of my favourite spots. What do you think, for Micro Four Thirds, what do you think is like the unique thing to Micro Four Thirds compared to APS-C, compared to full frame? The sheer vast array of camera bodies and lenses, because there's so many brands now that are in the alliance, like we've got Sigma, we've got uh, Yongnuo, we've got Seven Artisans, we've got loads and loads on the mount, and there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of combinations to choose from. And I think that's quite unique, particularly if you are a little bit of a camera nerd as well as a photography nerd like me. Having a little, a new piece of equipment that might be quite affordable, but you know, gives you a little bit of a spark of inspiration. I have quite a revolving door of cameras in my house, and I do really enjoy that aspect of the system. Just to love Louis Vuitton and go in there and all this. 
It's not often that I have the opportunity to talk about this, but this Lumix GM1 gives me the perfect opportunity, and that is cameras that spark joy. Much like Marie Kondo's minimalism philosophy, in which she talks about items that spark joy and removing those from your life which do not spark joy. I want to apply the same philosophy to cameras. For me, a camera that sparks joy is more likely to get used. I'm not much of a mathematician, but I know this, that enjoyment equals more photos. But it is. It's paradoxical, and yet, it works. No one got better at anything by doing it sparingly. No one got better at photography by taking fewer photos. No one got better at basketball by shooting fewer hoops. Thank you for this camera. This is amazing. I haven't got the strap on at the moment. I might drop it in the water. That yeah, with this one, sweet. genuinely, like you yeah. could just like move your hand and forget you got it. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. What's your name, guys? George. George. Nice to meet you, man. How you doing? Should we be worried about the future of Micro Four Thirds? It sort of seems like there isn't heaps of development happening. So I think it all really depends on what is brought out next. It seems to me like OM system has really gone for the niche of, of wildlife and, and, and fast burst modes, which is great because there'll always be a high-end camera for that. And Lumix tends to toe the line. Dog bark. Dog bark. Dog so Lumix went for a different niche where it's sort of a, a truly hybrid setup. So you have really, really high-end video features as well as those high-end photography features. But I do think we have lost the way a little bit. I do think the joy of the system is the smaller photo-centric cameras. And either it's going to be we're going to get a couple of them that come out and everyone's going to be like, these are awesome. Give food your run for the money in my dreams. Or it becomes an enthusiast system. I mean, even if nothing else was brought out now, there is that many available in the used market. We're going to have things to play with for a long time to come. This is real, honestly. It's so incognito. Oh, no. oh God. Literally, because yeah. when, I, when I was in London, I actually had the massive Nikon. Yeah. And I was going like, way up to people, and now this is just completely the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you could only use one camera, presumably the Micro Four Thirds, for everyday photography, what would it be? Just for photography, I think I would probably choose the GM1 the little blue machine because it is so genuinely pocketable you know like sometimes people say this camera is pocketable and then they have a massive APS-C lens on it like with the GM1 it's the smallest or one of the smallest interchangeable lens cameras digital ever made and it doesn't sacrifice any of the image quality it's super I wish we could get a new one in 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 the coming years That'd be so good. I have to agree with Emily. The GM1 with some slight improvements to bring it up to date would be a near perfect, no brainer, pocketable camera that you could shoot with every single day of the year. However, I think my choice in terms of a Micro Four Thirds camera that I could use every day, if I had to pick one just for photography, would actually go back to an old favorite of mine. And that is the Olympus OMD EM10 Mark I. And yes, there are newer iterations of this camera, but I felt no real restrictions with the EM10 Mark I. I think for me, I tried out several lenses on that camera, but I know really now which lens I would go for. And I think with how my approach to street photography has changed, I'm much happier getting in people's faces. I think I'd have a much better time with the EM10 now compared to when I used it over a year ago. I want to give a big thank you to Emily for featuring in this video and for lending me her Lumix GM1 for the full day of street photography. On that day, we also shot this video here for Emily's channel, in which I showed her a bit of advice around shooting film photography because she's dabbling in the analog and it's going to be exciting. So go watch it.